Hi guys, thanks for joining me here today. Today I want to talk to you about HP's Nimble Storage and more specifically provide a high level overview of the latest generation of hardware. But before I do that, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a background into where the company come from. So in January 2008, Nimble Storage was founded and by 2017 was acquired by HPE, which today have given us the latest generation of hardware, which is known as the fifth generation. So Nimble have two types of arrays. The adaptive flash array, sometimes known as a hybrid array, and the old flash array, which we'll come on to later on in this video. So in this diagram, we've got the HF20, which is the entry level Nimble array, which is for the SME small enterprise space, which delivers 27KI ops at 4K block on a mixed read write workload, going all the way up to a HF60, delivering 240KI ops again at 4K on a mixed read write workload. And you may ask, well, what about the C model and the H model. For example, you've got a HF20, a HF20C, and a HF20H. Well, the H will come back to shortly. But the HF20 supports compression and deduplication. And then you've got the C model, the HF20C which supports compression only, so no deduplication here. And the performance is almost identical across the three of them. And that's because it's the same controller that sits in all three. However, in the HF20C, we can use the free CPU cycles and RAM that are now not used for deduplication in order to host further capacity. So the effective capacity capabilities, as you'll see, of the HF20C are higher than the HF20, even though they support the same IOPS. Now all arrays in the hybrid portfolio come fully populated with 21 drives. These 21 drives range from one terabyte drives up to 10 terabyte drives this supporting up to 210 terabytes raw capacity all within the same 4RU rack space and this brings me back to the HF20H which is the same chassis but with 11 drives populated again ranging from the same one terabyte drives all the way up to the 10 terabyte drives. Now, if 210 terabytes raw capacity isn't enough capacity for your requirement, then Nimble Hybrid Arrays pour up to six capacity expansion shelves that come fully populated, again, with another 21 hard drives. It's also worth noting that if you populate the head up with, say, one terabyte hard drives, that doesn't limit you on having to populate expansion shelves with one terabyte drives. So now let's talk about the SSDs in this solution. Nimble also has up to six SSDs within the controller head in what Nimble calls dual flash carriers. This is a three and a half inch HDD to two two and a half inch SSD converter which the SSDs are used for recaching in a hybrid system. These three dual flash carriers are split into two banks of what Nimble calls Bank A and Bank B. This provides the ability to populate with further SSDs in multiples of three, unless again you're buying the H model controller and then the SSDs are purchased in twos that are still split as Bank A and Bank B. This leads me on to resilience, where hard drives within the array utilise triple parity RAID. 
This provides three parity drives, which in turn means the array can simultaneously lose three hard drives and your data is still intact. This setup is a non-configurable feature, which delivers a simplistic array management without impacting performance. On the back of the array, we have two controllers, which work in an active passive architecture, which supports the ability to serve storage and provide maximum performance in the event of a controller failure. Each controller is effectively a server, as you'd expect occupies a minimum of one physical CPU, memory DIMMs and PCIe buses, which can be populated with Ethernet and or fiber channel cards to provide connectivity. These PCIe cards come in three port type options, Ethernet in 10 gig base T, SFP plus or 16 gig fiber channel. Each control is also equipped with something called MVDIMs, also known as non-volatile dual inline memory modules. These are used for storage writes within the array and support the ability to provide sub-millisecond write latencies through the use of high performance low latency DRAM. These MVDIMs are backed up using a supercapacitor which supports the life expectancy of the storage device. So gone of the days of replacing battery backup units. And as you'd expect with every enterprise grade solution, two power supplies providing no single point of failure at any point on the array. Let's now look at the all flash array. As you can see, the performance levels in these arrays are similar in IOPS as the hybrid systems. So why would you purchase the all flash array? Well, the old flash array would guarantee low latency reads as all reads would be addressed by the SSD whereas on a hybrid there is only a subset of SSD that would be used for read cache therefore when you have a cache miss reads would come from the hard disks where the medium latency is naturally higher due to its mechanical components now the difference on the front of the array the array is fully populated with dual flash carriers. These arrays support up to 48 SSDs and again like the hybrid systems are physically split into two banks. However, are populated in factors of 24. These individual SSD capacities to date range from 480 gigabytes to 4 terabytes. This providing a maximum of 184 terabytes raw capacity in the controller head. If further storage capacity is required, up to two expansion shelves can be added dependent on model purchased. Touching back on the AF20Q, this array delivers the AF20 controllers with 12 SSDs, also known as quarter populated as an entry level array. The old flash array also supports what has been branded triple parity plus RAID. Unlike the hybrid, the old flash array supports loss of up to six simultaneous drive failures, three per bank, with the also added feature integrated sparing. This feature supports every other SSD having sector failures and the array would keep running without data loss. And lastly, I wanted to mention scale-out architecture. If one array doesn't deliver the performance or capacity you desire, then the solution can scale out up to four arrays, regardless of array type. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you guys for watching. And if you'd like to see more videos, please like and subscribe.